What's up everyone? My name is Cody Engel and in our last video we talked about um, properties and fields, all of that good stuff with classes. In this video I want to talk about um, a little bit more of an advanced topic with classes and object-oriented programming in general and we're going to continue to work off of our calculator class to talk about the topic of abstract classes and kind of what those are um, because they start to um, cover more advanced things like inheritance and all of that. So through using our calculator and being able to um, do all of these neat things, let's say that we wanted to add on to our calculator and let's say that we wanted to not only add on to our calculator but also um, force people to implement their own calculator if they wanted to use it. They can't use our own calcul the calculator that we've created specifically. So we'll start off by saying that this calculator class is abstract. We'll go ahead and we'll run it and you'll notice that um, we get this error, cannot create an instance of an abstract class. So what is this? Well, a abstract class by definition cannot be created, it's abstract. It allows you to build other classes from it, but you cannot create your own. So for our first example, we will just uh, implement our own calculator and we'll just call it, uh, so class, we'll say better calculator. And I'm just going to, over here in this window, I'm going to collapse our calculator down just to kind of avoid some clutter so we can really focus on just implementing our better calculator. And in order to do that, we will say that it will inherit from, by doing this colon, our calculator. And our calculator class, we still provide it a constructor value, or still say that it has a constructor and in this case we are just going to copy the initial value allow our better calculator to include that initial value and then we will just say whatever initial value you provide us to our better calculator we will then just run that and so if we come up here and we say this calculator will be our better calculator takes the initial value we go ahead we hit the run button and you can see wow it does exactly what it was doing before what we can now do is we can implement our own stuff so kind of talking about how the divide wasn't working um, as expected because we're using integer values well for this video it is going to continue to not work as you would expect but we're going to instead allow our users of the better calculator to get a remainder if they wanted to for a number. So for this we will say int int it takes a number we're gonna say print line just so we can kind of reuse our current uh, logging pattern and then we're gonna use that uh, modulo division um, because this will give us the remainder of a value and we're just going to then return current value divided by number and the reason why we aren't setting the current value to the number is because it seems kind of weird like if if I just want to know the remainder of something I probably don't need that to still be sort of like the the current value that is stored in our calculator so a um, little bit a little bit funky but I think it it goes to show um, the, the point of this or how this is working. And so now for this, we will say, I just, instead of wanting to divide, I just want to know what the remainder would be. So I go ahead, I run it. We get that. And then, you know, because we were so dependent on this result being there, um, we we actually don't, don't get to see that. So we'll say val, um, remainder equals that. And let's just bump the result up into here and then we'll say print extra line again and just say remainder. 
So with that, we go ahead, we run it, and then we see the remainder ends up being one. Cool. So that is a way of you know adding this functionality onto something, but we could do another thing. So instead of passing in an initial value, let's say we wanna provide our own initial value for our class. So we can say class and then say bad, or maybe not bad, random calculator. And so it will not take any sort of values, but it will still inherit from our calculator class. And for that, we are going to provide a random number. And the way that we can do this in Kotlin is we can call this class called random. And we'll say random dot next int. And then we need to provide it kind of the, the, nu the numbers that it can generate from, from a random pool of numbers. And so we'll say the lowest value we'll start with is the min value for an int and then the highest value, which would just be the max value. Cool, we have that now. And now we will say, instead of using our better calculator, we will use our random calculator, which no longer takes an initial value and no longer has that remainder. And if we go ahead and run it, we will see our result is a really large number because it started off with a really large number. We can go ahead, we can run it again, and we'll see, you know, now the result ends up being negative. It, it ends up being that because we took a really large number, we multiplied it by 54. When we did that, it it went over the max value of an integer, so um, this ends up essentially it's like overriding the value, like it'll it'll still do the multiplication for you, but it can only store up to you know, the max value of an int, so like 2 billion something. So if it goes over that number, it's going to just kind of continue over starting from the minimum value of the integer. And so in that case, I ended up being a negative number for that. So we can see though, our random calculator ends up just, you know, giving us random values. Like we, we don't know what it will be. It's not very predictable. Um, and we're not able to provide it with any sort of starting value. But those are kind of two ways that we can use our abstract class um, to extend functionality. So we have a base calculator that can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, stores values for us, and then we're just building our own calculator on top of that foundation that we have. Uh, one thing that I do want to call out, um, just because we aren't doing everything that we could with abstract classes is to just sort of call out what we're what we're not doing so we an abstract class is one thing but we could also have like an abstract function and so we could say abstract function uh, print and so this would you know maybe do maybe say like this is going to be how we're going to print something so like it would take a string with a string, and then instead of us doing print line, we would call print. Um, actually, just because we're already halfway there, we'll, we'll, we'll implement this really quick, but um, the idea would just be like, you have a way of printing things, and then you define within this class how it should print. And so within IntelliJ, like, it gives you a nice little operator where if you just do option enter on a Mac, it'll say implement members. And it says you have to implement this. And to that we just say override. And so for ours, we'll just say print line with a string. We're not really doing anything groundbreaking here. Uh, but we're, we're essentially saying that you have to, in order to, to use this class, you, you have to define how it will print. Um, and then maybe for our for our random one, maybe it prints, I don't know, our string, but it also does something different. Like it'll so it'll print out our, our string and then it'll say like uh I don't know. Something random. Go ahead and run it. Um uh, we get a stack overflow error. 
we we get the stack overflow error because we create a recursive loop we'll we'll we can talk about those later if you have questions want to know about recursion let me know in the comment section down below but instead of doing print like that we we should have done print line because essentially what we were doing was when we called print it was calling this print and just it, it kept doing that and doing that until uh well and until our computer realized what it was doing and said hey probably shouldn't do that so now if we go ahead we run it uh, we don't get that craziness there we just get this where it, it prints every time you call print from adding it does that so um, but other things uh, you know abstract class or abstract functions aren't the only thing like you can do like an abstract var to say I don't know some string string and then you just have to define it up here but a calculator I can't really think of a great example for why you would do that uh, so with that we're we're gonna go ahead and and end this video um, if you want me to go more in depth in terms of like abstract functions or uh, abstract properties again let me know in the comment section down below I can create a video which will not use a calculator it'll use something else as an example um, that kind of plays in a little bit nicer to that but um, with that this is essentially what a um, what an abstract class is um, how you would use them and yeah really just the basics of them so thank you again for watching if you enjoyed the video be sure to give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and if you want to know when I upload the newest video hit the notification bell you'll get a push notification as soon as I upload a new video so you can stay up to date on Kotlin so thank you again for watching and I will catch you in the next one